in the woods Afternoon guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do real quick is I actually came out today to shoot a couple of photo shoots to make some pictures that I'm going to send to Waterford Press for some survival pamphlets and Dura guys that I'm in the process of working on with them. Um, so I needed a picture of a blade struck off of a piece of flint. Um, what I wanted to show you guys today while I'm out here is I thought that I would take this opportunity to go ahead and take this hammer stone and this piece of flint and show you how to drive a flake or a blade off of this piece of flint that you can use for a cutting tool in an emergency situation. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a piece of flint. It needs to be any rock with a hardness of seven or above. Um, flint will work, quartz, chert, um, any kind of volcanic glass like obsidian will work just as well. And of course, like we showed a week or so ago with making that point out of a piece of glass, you can also make blades from glass yards as well. So stay with me. I'm just gonna show you real quick how to knock a blade off of this big piece of uh, flint that I've got right here and I'll be right back with you okay guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hammer stone and this piece of flint you can see the flint exposed inside the cortex right there and right here where a couple flakes have come off and I'm gonna show you how to remove a flake from a flint nodule that's important if you're going to make stone tools even a rudimentary cutting tool of some sort you're gonna need to be able to knock blades off of a piece of flint like this to use for that purpose. So we're going to find us a good ridge here. What I'm looking for is I'm just looking for a place that's below the center line that when I hit it, it's going to drive a flake off. And then I want to strike that with a glancing blow of downward pressure. Like that. Okay. Doing that is going to knock, you can see that flake that came off of there. Now, multiple flakes came off at that. Okay, there's a lot of flakes there, but a lot of that's covered with cortex. So that may not be the best blade material for us. So we may have to go down a little bit further than that to get a good blade off of this blade, off of this piece of flint. Okay, there you can see where that one came out right there. Okay, that thing right there is sharp as a scalpel. All right, that thing would skin anything you need to skin pretty quick. And again, if it dulled down, you could either nap it or you could knock another blade off of now what you have is basically a blade core that you can just knock repetitive blades off of over and over again. But that would be a good stone flake right there to use for a cutting tool. Okay guys, I went ahead and knocked three consecutive blades off of this core. Um, this one here has got a lot of cortex on it. It's pretty much a toss away. You know, you could use that for a knife if you needed to, just for a quick gutting type situation, but it's pretty much not something I'd use very often. This one here is the first one we knocked off, dandy fine little thumb scraping type blade. That's perfect. I'd probably knock these edges off with a hammer stone just to make it nice and smooth, and I could use that for a lot of things. Now this one right here is the third one that we knocked off, and this thing would make a dandy fine arrowhead no problem. It's a little thicker at the base. We can pop that off of there. It's already really nice and thin. And we could just make a really, really good arrowhead out of this really, really quickly. So I would keep that one, you know, with me or in my kit to work on at night or whatever the case may be, nap that thing down into an arrowhead so I'd have it. And then I've got the blade. Now, I'm looking at this piece of stone, and I think if I took and rounded this off a little bit here, and if I could biface this thing, get this around center line, and then go the other direction with it to make a biface out of it, then I've got a great hand axe. So you could get a lot of tools out of something like this very, very quickly without a whole lot of effort if you just understand the process of how to fracture and knock flakes off of some piece of heavy-duty flint like this. Okay, so I've knocked several more pieces of blade off of this, and I went ahead and taken this other side and rounded it off a little bit, or at least made it so it's not so sharp, and you can see I'm still knocking small flakes off, but the angle is what keeps you from knocking big flakes off. And I just want that so it's not real sharp because I want a hand axe, okay? And that gives me a hand axe that I can actually cut trees down with. And I've got plenty of blades to work with here that are plenty sharp for skinning tools. I've got, you know, stuff to strike my flint and steel striker with. 
These are pretty much marginal here. They got a lot of cortex on the back of them. Those were the heavy ones that came off to get down to the good flint to make this hand axe. But any of those will still work to strike flint and steel with. But all of these right here will all make blades of some kind and a good blade. So you've got plenty of choice there to work with for skinning and things like that. Now let me kind of show you, you know, what kind of blades these actually are, how good they actually are by cutting some stuff with them. Okay, here's a piece of a uh, hand pad that I use quite a bit. And this is uh, vegetable tanned eighth inch cowhide. So let's get one of our blades that we knocked off. In fact, there's the very first one we knocked off right there. And let's just see how good that thing will do at cutting this leather. And if it'll cut leather, that's already been processed, it'll definitely cut animal hide. Okay, there you go, guys. Pretty good clean cut there. All right. Still nice and sharp. If I was just using that for skinning or gutting, nothing to it. That's a great arrowhead piece right there. A great arrowhead piece right there. A real nice arrowhead could be made out of that one. Nice arrowhead could be made out of that one. That one's pretty thin. That one would make a nice arrowhead. That one's pretty shaky at best. So you got one, two, three, four, five arrowhead possibilities there. A hand, hand thumb scraping knife device right there. And a hand axe. Let's go see what we can do on a tree with this hand axe. Okay. Get the cobweb off this thing. This is an oak, right? It's only probably, I don't know, a three inch, two and a half inch oak. It's not a giant one by any means, but it is an oak. So it's not gonna be a pushover. Anything bigger than this with a hand axe, you're going to be there for a while. You may be there for a while with this one. So what we'll do is we'll fever chew this. Just like we would if we were batoning a knife through it. Okay, here we go. A lot of calories spent there to get that tree down, okay? But that's a green tree, live oak, with a stone hand axe. It can be done. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this real quick, impromptu video on how to make a few simple stone tools from basically a blade core or from a, you know, piece of flint with the cortex around it that we found in a local area. So, you know, it's not impossible to do. It takes a little bit of skill to understand it. It takes practice, it takes dirt time. But you can knock several tools off of one large piece of flint material very quickly that you can use to help affect your survivability. I appreciate you joining me on this video. I appreciate your support, I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything that you do for the Pathfinder School, for me and for my family. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.